Good morning. Uh, it's a great pleasure to be at this interesting conference, and I would like to thank Haida for the kind invitation to be here. I am enjoying it very much. Uh, my purpose this morning is to address three topics. Yes, get it in the right direction. Firstly, it is imperative that we investigate what transformation means, as uh, Francis has just explored for us. For there is a substantial risk that the, word, that the word will be used carelessly or even dishonestly. Secondly, since transformation as a goal requires that we think broadly in time and space, I will briefly discuss our capacity to do so. Finally, I will present what I term the four questions of sustainability and discuss their applicability to transformation. Transformation to sustainability is an ambitious undertaking. Were we to fully understand what it means and how to bring it about, transformation would provide a key to addressing many of the world's challenges. Yet its very potential should give us pause. Transformation is a term that can mean too many different things. It can be deployed either to clarify meaning or to obscure it. It can be captured by interest groups with selfish agendas. It is certain that the term will be used without rigorous meaning and that its meaning will degenerate over time. I will illustrate this by looking at what happened to two other terms that once had great value, ecology and sustainability. Forty years ago, when environmental consciousness was first emerging, the term ecology was a technical term restricted in use to a few specialists. In time, the term escaped into the public arena where it began to mutate and take on new meanings. Soon businesses were offering ecological this and ecological that, and at least the public meaning of the term became diluted. In the intervening years, this problem has of course gotten worse. In November 2005, for example, I was invited to Los Angeles to give commentary for an environmental film. The production company arranged for me to be met at the airport by a firm called Ecolimo, <laughs> offering ecological chauffeured transportation throughout the greater Los Angeles area. Uh, the owner, who was also my driver, told me that her goal was to replace her fleet of Toyota Priuses and more conventional limousines with vehicles running on biodiesel fuel. She said that she wanted to, quote, get off petroleum. In the interest of politeness, I didn't explain that biofuels wouldn't accomplish this anytime soon. <laughs> A similar process affects the term sustainability. It has escaped the laboratory and is now in the wild. Some time ago, a colleague suggested to me that the term would in time become unusable at least by those of us who care about its meaning. I am not so pessimistic. Still, it was startling when U.S. Secretary of State Condoleezza Rice began speaking in July 2006 of a sustainable ceasefire between Hezbollah and Israel. A sustainable ceasefire. We wonder immediately, does the term Applying the term to the cessation of conflict yields semantic content of the same nature as sustainable energy or sustainable agriculture? Is this a correct or allowable use of the term or is it an indication that the term sustainability has become as degraded in popular usage as ecology? Dr. Rice's expression illustrates the broader dilemma. Those of us who care about sustainability in the context of the human future and the Earth's resources now have to acknowledge that there are people who want to sustain agriculture, biodiversity, ecosystems, energy, firms, forests, income, institutions, markets, rangelands, ways of life, well-being, wetlands, and many other things including ceasefires. My favorite use of the term is an internet site that advertises sustainable eyeshadow. <laughs> In a situation of such confusion, we must resort to formal definitions. Uh, the term sustain comes originally from the Latin sustinere and into English through the old French soutenir. Both terms li mean literally to hold underneath. In other words, to uphold our support. The shorter Oxford English Dictionary 
sixth edition lists nine definitions of sustain. Two of these are particularly useful. Number three reads, cause to continue in a certain state, maintain at the proper level or standard. Number five, which is consistent with the biophysical concepts of sustainability, reads, support life in, provide for the life or needs of. Both definitions are consistent with the original Latin and French terms. To support something is, to sustain something is to support its continuation. Sustainability is therefore the science of continuity. Sustainability emerges from a, a success in addressing existential problems, that is, problems of continuity. Sustainability arises from the long-term success of problem-solving efforts. The Shorter Oxford English Dictionary also offers 12 definitions of transformation, one of which, number two, seems to match our purposes. It reads, a complete change in character, nature, etc. Cultures change continuously, but we do not consider such changes to be transformative. Instead, we can conceive of transformation by the distinction made by Robert Carnero between social changes that are quantitative and those that are qualitative. Quantitative changes are small and incremental. Adding new roles to an institution is a quantitative change. Replacing the iPhone 5 with the iPhone 6 is a change that is quantitative. A qualitative change, on the other hand, is a change in the state of a system. The society, our other system, has been so altered that we recognize it as different. Transformation is qualitative change. A classic example would be the emergence of industrialism and dependence on fossil fuels. These developments changed humanity's dependence on immediate solar energy and caused new ways of life to emerge. We recognize this as a transformation, a qualitative change to something that didn't exist before. Let me illustrate this by reference to what biologists call ring species. A ring species is a set of neighboring populations of an organism that can interbreed with each other. Each local population can interbreed with its neighbor. The ends of the distribution, however, cannot breed. Thus, between adjacent populations, there are only quantitative differences, but between populations at the ends of the distribution, the differences are qualitative. The end populations have been transformed into different species. It is just so in human social change. Societies and cultures change continuously in small ways, and we cannot speak of such quantitative changes as transformation. Transformation is, rather, a major qualitative change so that we recognize that a different way of life has emerged. Considering transformation as qualitative change has implications for us to consider. One is that trans transformation is best recognized in hindsight. Just a different species in ring species are recognizable only when comparing the ends of a distribution so social transformation is recognizable in a historical perspective. This is yet another reason why I argue that sustainability must be a historical science. This also suggests that we may not easily predict transformation, when it will occur or what it will consist of. And if we cannot readily predict transformation as qualitative change, we must be humble in thinking that we can direct it. Qualitative change often brings something that we did not and could not envision. A historical perspective on sustainability and transformation brings up my second topic. Both are great in scale and large in concept. Sustainability and transformation require us to think broadly in terms of time and space. Think of the old admonition to think globally but act locally. Perhaps the greatest challenge we face is that evolution did not equip our species to think broadly in time and space. Our ancestors never faced problems that were distant in time or space, so evolution never favored individuals with the capacity to anticipate such problems. Thus, most people lived their lives locally, concerned with their immediate well-being. Yet thinking pre broadly is precisely what sustainability and transformation require. Our most fundamental challenge is to recognize that we are limited 
and the very capabilities that are most essential to our future. The point of these observations is that sustainability and transformation require us to think rigorously about our future, discarding imprecise concepts and solutions that have only superficial appeal. In my experience, many concepts in sustainability are imprecise and superficial. Thus, there are many concepts to discard. I have recommended that this problem can be addressed by asking and answering what I call the four questions of sustainability. For our purposes, I will also discuss how these four questions apply to transformation. We can bring a degree of rigor to our discourse by a simple step. Each time one hears the word sustainability, insist that the speaker answer four questions. Sustain what? Sustain it for whom? Sustain it for how long? And sustain it at what cost? These questions appear simple on the surface, but the ease with which they may be offered obscures their power. Asking these questions carries one deeply into a rigorous assessment of what sustainability means and how it may be achieved in specific situations. The same applies to asking these questions in regard to transformation. The first question is, sustain what? This question is disarmingly simple, yet it is routinely overlooked. There are fortunately many people committed to sustainability. Unfortunately, they often neglect to specify what they want to sustain. If pressed on the matter, such persons are likely to say that they want to sustain some aspect of the biophysical environment or their way of life. In the present context, this leads to the question, transform what? All of us came to this meeting believe that transformation to sustainability is a worthwhile goal. Yet if what pressed on what to transform, we would undoubtedly find many answers. This diversity is acceptable. The problem is in not stating one's transformation goal at the outset. If we fail to state our transformation goal, we will all think that we share the same goal. Confusion and conflict will result when we find that we don't. Explicitly stating a transformation goal is the first step toward averting this confusion. The second question is, sustain for whom? People will work to sustain what they value. Yet if sustainability is about values, a conundrum arises. Different people and different groups will have conflicting sustainability goals. Furthermore, these goals may change over time. We think of sustainability as a benign goal intended to achieve good. In fact, at least in the short term, sustainability efforts produce winners and losers. Sustainability generates conflict, which may itself be very costly and may undermine the effort. Conflict involving sustainability and the environment seems frequently to develop some intractable characteristic. These are firstly, there will be denial of the problem or the issue may just be ignored. The pressure for profits or employment demands attention more urgently than the uncertainty of an eventual problem. Secondly, there will be conflict between contending interests. Local interests may be pitted against national interests, national interests against international ones. Local people may contend with government officials and with environmental advocates. Thirdly, there will be a bifurcation within local communities. Progressive and conservative factions develop. Leaders emerge who preach that nothing is wrong. Seeking reassurance, many people inevitably follow such leaders. In undertaking a sustainability program, it should be made clear at the outset who will benefit from the program and who will be harmed. This will not avoid the problem of conflict, but it will ensure that the issue is raised early in the discussion and that the discussion becomes more productive thereby. Similarly, we must ask transform for whom? Not everyone in a community or a society will have the same sustainability goal. Some will deny that there is any problem now or in the future. People of a conservative disposition may oppose transformation as a matter of principle. Many others will disagree about what needs to be transformed. Every situation of social change produces winners and losers. It is necessary to expect this at the outset. The third question is, sustain for how long? Sustainability is always a temporary phenomenon. What to sustain and how to sustain it depend on context, 
in context is something that we cannot control. We may not even recognize that we are embedded in a context. My colleague Tim Allen likes to say that if fish were scientists, the last thing they would discover would be water. <laughs> he means that water is the context in which fish are embedded, and so they are unaware of it. It is just so with us. We are embedded in a context that includes our cultures, other societies, economies, historical trends, and the biophysical environment, climate, and much else. Most people live their lives unaware that these are our context, just as fish are unaware of water. Yet a sustainability goal is only meaningful within a context, which, exists, which itself exists in a specific place and at a historical moment. Change any of these and the sustainability goal must change as well. Understanding context is another arena in which it is necessary to think more broadly than we are ordinarily inclined to do. Many of our colleagues believe that we will achieve a sustainable future through technical innovation. That is, innovation will con presumably continue to reduce the amount of energy and raw materials that go into producing and operating our material culture, allowing us to continue to consume much like we do now. Today's system of institutionalized innovation, then, is part of the context of sustainability. By this line of reasoning, we can remain sustainable as long as our system of institutionalized innovation remains productive. The challenge here, as my colleagues and I have shown, is that our system of innovation is actually losing productivity. We are gaining fewer and fewer innovations for the resources that we invest in this activity. If this trend continues, and there is good reason to believe that it will, the day will come when that part of our context changes. The day will come when we will be less able to innovate our way out of challenges. So it is also with transformation. Transformation to sustainability is achievable only within a context the context that makes a sustainability goal meaningful. A transformation that is a qualitative change depends on knowing that context. It is not enough to agree on a transformation goal. We must also understand under what conditions the goal is achievable and recognize when it is no longer meaningful. The fourth question is, sustain at what cost? There is a tendency to think that sustainability is free that it emerges as a passive consequence of consuming less. I have studied a number of cases of historical societies that collapsed, as well as some that proved sustainable for various periods of time. One lesson of that research is that sustainability is a function of success at solving problems. Societies achieve continuity by overcoming challenges. The dilemma is that solving problems tends to cause societies to grow in complexity, and complexity always has a metabolic cost. As societies grow in complexity to solve problems, they also become costlier, requiring more and more energy. This, in the cases I have studied, is the major factor that ultimately makes societies vulnerable to collapse. If sustainability consists, consists of success at solving problems, and solving problems generates complexity and costliness, then we are forced to the realization that being sustainable can be very costly. To sustain our way of life, our current way of life, could likely require higher complexity and energy use on a continual basis. Many people argue for transformation to a simpler, less costly kind of society. I have no quarrel with this ideal, but will mention two points that give one pause. The first is that, historically, this would be quite rare. In my research, I have learned of only one large-scale, complex society that achieved a measure of continuity by simplifying and reducing costs. It is disconcerting to realize that while many people advocate simplification, there is only one society that actually achieved it on a planned basis. The others either grew in complexity and costliness or collapsed. The second point is that, as economists argue, people respond to incentives. People will not forego affordable consumption today on the basis of abstractions about the future. 
We may wish there were not costs associated with transformation to sustainability, but there will be, and we cannot avoid confronting them. In conclusion, we must acknowledge that transformation to sustainability presents a dilemma. Transformation is qualitative change, a change in the character of a system. In contrast, to sustain something is to support its continuation. Our predicament is, therefore, that we must reconcile the apparent contradiction between continuity and change. This is a matter of addressing the first question. What do we want to sustain and what do we want to transform? Can we change in a way to sustain what people value, yet transform what we must? Transformation, as I have argued, is most evident in hindsight. It is also difficult or even impossible to anticipate or direct. In any instance of transformation to sustainability, there would be people who benefit, but also many people who prefer the status quo. Transformation can be appropriated by people with selfish agendas, just as the term sustainability has been appropriated to apply to everything from ways of life to ceasefires to eyeshadow. In the face of such dilemmas, we must be clear not only about what to transform, but also for whom, for how long, and at what cost. I am calling for us to approach the goal of transformation rigorously, in contrast to the muddled and imprecise ways we have approached sustainability. We must be logical, explicit, and consistent. The alternative is that transformation will come to reflect whatever shifting meanings and agendas people project onto it. Thank you. <laughs>